Of all the lands of Eriador, there is none more majestic, inspiring, or somber than Evendim. Once the ruling capital of the Kingdom of Arnor, Evendim has long since been abandoned to the ravages of time. Even though the great city of Anuminas towers over the landscape and a giant lake covers the majority of the land, you may be surprised to learn that there is quite a lot more to this forgotten land of kings. Here are 10 things you may have missed in Evendim. Evendim is actually a hobbitish word. It is composed of evening and dim, which refers to dusk. The Sindarin word for Evendim is Aduil, which is why the fields of Osferad and Tinindir are called Parth Aduil. Oatbarton and the surrounding hobbit areas are actually a part of the Shire known as the North Farthing. The Shire is broken up into four distinct regions. The West Farthing consists of all lands west of Bywater, and the East Farthing all lands east up to the Brandywine River. The North Farthing consists of the Greenfields and Oatbarton, while the South Farthing, which is not in game today, is all lands south of the Green Hill Country. Dwalling is a hobbit village that is filled to the brim with Tolkien references. Three hobbits that act as quest givers are named Ronald Dwale, Hob Hillbrow, and Bob Greenieves. These hobbits are an homage to members of the Barovian Society Tea Club, a real club of literature enthusiasts of which Tolkien was a member. As mentioned in my Shire video, the other three members of the club are in the Burdened Baby in Mickle Delving, awaiting Ronald and his companions to arrive. Ronald Dwale offers a quest to find his son's missing toy dog. This is actually a true story that occurred to Tolkien and his son. This event inspired Tolkien to write Roverandom, a story about a dog that annoyed a wandering wizard and was turned into a toy as punishment. Rover then went on many adventures to the moon and under the sea. Finally, Dwalling itself is an homage to Tolkien. The word Dwale, of which Dwalling derives from, has been connected to Dwalo Kenais, the gothic translation of Tolkien's own name. Ronald Dwale is thus a direct homage to John Ronald Rule Tolkien. Anuminas once held one of the three Palantiri of the north. The last king of Arnor would eventually move the capital and the Seeing Stone to Fornos terrain, leaving Anuminas abandoned. This is actually why there is such a large force of Angmarim soldiers within the city. Under orders of Amarthiel, they have brought back the Palantir to use against the free peoples of Middle-earth. Speaking of Anuminas, did you know that there is a capture the flag system in place within the city? By defeating Angmarim forces in key places around the city, you can help the wardens of Anuminas reclaim the area. However, the Angmarim forces are always attempting to reclaim the city. Depending on who owns what, there may be rare monsters that you can defeat for reputation, rewards, and deeds. Additionally, if all points are captured by the wardens, all players in Evendim receive a buff. Evendim was more than just the home of men of old. In fact, it was once home to a couple of rather famous Eldar. At the end of the First Age, Galadriel and Celeborn settled in the hills of Evendim for some time before leaving towards Eregion. This is why there are elves in the Eve Spire. There is also a water vase that serves as an indirect homage to Galadriel's vase in Karas Galadon. Speaking of those elves, the Eve Spire itself resides in the end current of a small river that cuts through the Emin Uil. Did you know that this same river eventually exits out into the Grey Havens? Yet another connection to why elves reside here. Depending on your leveling path, Evendim may be the first time most players encounter the Garadine. While perhaps seeming a little out of place, these men can be considered in some respects canon to Tolkien's lore. Prior to the arrival of the Numenorians to Middle-earth, the inhabitants of Eriador were comprised of various tribes of men collectively named the Edain. The Edain were eventually driven out by the Numenorians, but some tribes persevered and of them the Garadain came out. While not possessing the same power as Bjorn's kin, their overall size and strength would make them a closer kinsman to each other than to the men of the Third Age. Garadain is Sindarin for werewolf men, with Gwar meaning werewolf and Edain meaning men or people. However, they do not seem to have any indication of a metamorphosis ability, simply a ritualistic adoration of wolves. Here are some bonus things you may have missed. There is a quest to kill a boar in Evendim. However, there are no boars in Evendim. This quest has you wait 30 minutes, looking all over the place for a single boar. However, ever since the addition of the North Cotton Farms instance, there is indeed a boar in Evendim. Defeating this boar within the North Cotton Farms instance will reward you with a quest to go back to the original quest giver and give him his long overdue award. Did you know that there are Angmarim fishing randomly in Anuminas? Isn't that weird? 
The statue at High King's Crossings is holding the scepter of Anuminos. This is the scepter of kings that Aragorn eventually inherits. Nice touch. Those were 10 things you may have missed in Evendim. Is there something I may have missed? Let me know in the comments below and I will do a follow up video in the future with your suggestions. Remember, if you like my videos, please subscribe and hit that like button. Also, would you like to see me release videos more often? Consider signing up for my Patreon where I offer cool little sneak peeks as to what goes into making my videos. Till next time!